another video. Today will be a different type of video. It's going to be a road guide. Now, I'm going to be doing two parts of this, two videos to the guide. So this will be part one. Part two is basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to get four people to help me go in a war game. And I'm basically going to tell you guys um, the rest of the tips and tricks that you can do as a rogue. So this one will be conduits legendaries everything you would need to know to get started your rotation your macros all you need and then the and the next part two video will be when you're actually in the game what you're going to be looking to do and what cds you're going to be looking to uh use whenever they use cooldowns so let's start off with the uh the first is conduits now i've done a i've done a um sub -grove guide in the past it's going to be almost perfectly the same thing nothing has changed to where there's enough you know to where you're running something different so the first list we're going to go big combat meditation this will allow you for basically your perfect curium your curium build now i've seen people go this one where it stuns them and stuff i i don't think any of these are i think these both are bad so i would definitely go with this one in my opinion but it's a fact that every rogue is doing that but your first conduit is rush setup now, if you were wondering how you get 278 conduits, you can either PVE or you could get the 2400 in 2s, um, in 3s, or RBGs. As you can see, I've been 2400. But uh, if you get 2400, you can just buy them. So I have every conduit on this guy, my alt rogue, all that. So rest that up. Everyone knows what it does. Energy cost, kidney shot, cheap shot, sap, distract, are reduced by 44%. If you're not running this, you need to be running it. Um, on assassination you don't because you're only using kidney but as definitely sub you want to be running this all the time on anything even if it's super low just run it slice and dice heals you for up to 39.6% of your maximum health over 36 seconds now this is really good because um, as you can see my top healing is my slice and dice 60k and the game didn't last long at all it probably lasts or maybe it did because I went did 600k I think I was one of you wanting a healer for a while but this will, this will allow you to do basically is when you're taking damage and you know you're killing shit so it's really easy so let's say um you're not doing damage and you're gonna do this so i'm i'm attacking and i'm getting ready for my setup so if you see me backstabbing stuff i'm getting my combo points i do a quick slice and dice and just you just want to stack combo points again so as you can see while i have the slice and dice it's doing a little bit of healing this will go over time to when if you're attacking something um, or if you're in an arena or something like that, it'll start healing you. This is really good to have all the time because it's that extra heal that you need as a rogue. While you're getting like 100 out, it doesn't. You won't really notice it that much, but when when you need that HP, when you're clicking file and um, you know the other file, it helps you out a shit ton. Um, next conduit, you're gonna be going with deeper daggers. Now there is quite a different thing you can run, but honestly, I'm just gonna tell you guys what I run and what I think you should be running as well. Uh, deeper dagger is really good conduit now i think if you're going for damage as every sub bug always dreams to do some, you know some damage so deeper dagger is definitely your go-to it just makes you do more damage close to the shot in the shadows this is a must for any rogue so you know there's no i'm not even going to talk about that everyone knows what that does plan to execution basically makes your symbols so usually a lot of rogues will not use their symbols on their actual go they use it when their energy goes low but what I do is I use it on my Shadow Dance because it gives you more damage with the conduit. So, you know, that's why I use symbols in my go to start it up. So if you see this, I click this, it'll click symbols, and there you go. Your next one will be quick decisions. This will allow you to step really far, and it's pretty fucking useful versus druids or anything that's super far. As you can see, I can step from all the way right here. That's a super long range. So for you do this be able to step to them really good for rbgs really good for everything in general and basically that is with the conduits there's not much more to them um you could switch out quick decisions for maybe prepared but i think this i think these are just ass i think everything else is ass in here in my opinion i mean maybe a few people that don't run it but i don't think they're not good okay that's just what it, it is what it is they're garbage trash can run what i'm running and you win you get victory now we're going to be going on to the talents and the PvP talents. And this is where it's the same thing, really. There's not much that has changed, but I'm basically keeping everyone up to date on what they want to be running. I am going to be doing an assassination guy whenever I do swap assassination and all that stuff. But 
for now this is going to be part one on everything you need to get set up and then the next one will be everything you need to be looking for in an actual game your first list is premeditation this will never change um this is just a must it'll make you do a lot of dam or you know, night walker will do a lot of dam the premeditation i would never pick anything else unless you're going for like a gloom blade one shot which i don't think is in the game anymore or weapon these are just pretty ass but uh premeditation is your go-to now i use subterfuge a lot more in threes now because of um a lot of these certain comps that have the um that trinket so if you're using sub which it, it'll allow you to do is you don't have to shadow dance to use it but as you can see two seconds and all that good stuff so i use sub versus anything that uses the trinkets and threes now in twos i wouldn't use it as a sub rogue because you want to use night stalker for the extra damage but if you need to you know get them set up with subterfuge this is a good practice you use it so if you're not good at cheap shotting like shadow dance cheap shotting or cheap shotting at a stealth or if you get hit at a stealth and you have it and you're not used to just coming out of stealth and then using your shadow lens or cheap shotting but um that's for new beginners i would use subterfuge if you're, you're new to rogue but otherwise night stalker will make you do more damage your third row now this is really this can switch up now if you're playing with the priest you want to put re running deeper to shred stratagem versus anything that's not double dps the reason i say not double dps is because cheap shot goes are very bad for rogue in general when you're playing a rogue healer, it's really bad to do cheap shot goes unless it's your starting go, your additional starter go. What I do is you'll see me running this versus anybody in twos with my healer that's a healer DPS or in threes versus wrestler druids is really good because you can kidney set. But um, if you're playing rogue mage, I would probably just keep the marked for death. Now, if you're good at maybe if you're facing a wrestler druid and you think that you can kidney set, you know, that could be really good. But uh, I think Mark Fedith is still just better in twos for uh, double DBS. Fourth row here is going to be Soothing. Now, this can be all three. This is the one row that you can pick all three and you could still be fine. Soothing got a big fucking nerf. So now in PvP, it only does 1%. So it's basically, you're, you're not healing for anything. So uh, Soothing, I would only really use it maybe if you are if you don't want to use Cheat Death. Cheat Death is probably the best out of... The best out of um, out of soothing and cheetah cheetah is probably 10 times better because it actually it's really useful and then elusiveness is when you use when you have a healer on your team it's really good because you know if two people are attacking at the same time you're taking 40 percent less or 30 percent less damage for six seconds which is pretty insane yeah i would go with cheat death and elusiveness now if you're doing like I just wouldn't run Soothing unless you're playing like Rogue Mage, but even then, I'd still go with Cheat Death probably. For your next, we're going to go with Brain on the Weak. This basically allows you to do more damage while they're in a stun on your stun on a Cheap Shot or a Kidney Shot. That's why I tell people that I carry that let me stun because we'll do more damage. And that's really the reason for that. This row right here, the 45th row. Now, if you're running a Venthyr one shot, which I might start doing for content because it could be really fun. We might, we might do a Venthyr Rogue, you know, some gameplay. You guys let me know in the comments if you guys want to see that. But, um, Dark of the Shadows, I really wouldn't run it unless you're going for a cheesy one-shot build. Developing the Shadows, you just get double dance. Really good. Your next row is just Master of the Shadows. These other two talents are garbage. Your PP talents, Shadow Duel, Smoke Bomb, and Disarm. Now, if you're playing with versus something you can't disarm... Tricks is really good for your teammate. It lets them do 15% more damage for 6 seconds. If you're not playing with a, a DPS or a Priest, you can go with Maneuverability. I've um, seen... I usually just run... Like, Shadow Duel, Smoke Bomb, Disarm. And if you're not disarming anything, Tricks. And if you're not Tricks anything, Maneuverability. Now we're going to go with Stat Priority. Now, you want to be going for the Tier Set. Because the Tier Set will make you do a lot of damage. Now it can break CC, so it can... There's a good side and a bad side. Now, if, you th if you're playing really, really high CR, the tier set may not be worth it because that one break of a CC could instantly lose you a game. But I still use it just because it does insane amount of damage and the rogue needs the damage. Like, without the tier set, you do a lot less damage. But um, my start priority, I, want, I usually want 35% plus verse and about 69 plus percent mastery. And almost 20% crit. Now this is what you always want to do. You you want to trade it out. You don't want to go with one stat. Because mastery gets nerfed in PvP. So it's kind of cringe. But it is what it is. Be around 35 plus verse. 
69 plus mastery and at least 18 percent crit your unity obviously it's the same unity as Kirin. you want it as a bell and then finality is your go-to legendary this is a must for your damage if you want to do big damage you need to use this now you could use the other one that shortens your cd usage but i don't think it's worth it unless you're facing maybe like rogue mage and like then you don't need that type of damage you just need to get out of there quick that could be really good and a really good um counter to other rogues if you're playing rogue versus rogue or something like that and basically for your enchants you want to be going with primary stats basically all of the everyone knows what the stats are by now and for your weapon the i've seen a lot of rogues using double dagger but there is actually a fist weapon that you can get that's verse mastery and you want to go for that that'll give you a lot of mastery i haven't seen a lot of rogues wearing it but i guess they didn't see it before but yeah i would be using the fist weapon really good gives you a lot of mastery and um it, it gives you a weapon so i can mold the thunder fury so you know what i mean we're all here vibing now for your macros now i don't have a lot of macros as you can see i don't have the mouse with keybinds it's the whole reason why i don't have blind macros stat macros um kidney macros all that good stuff so i'm basically stuck with you know clicking some of this shit like my poisons or my summon steward all that stuff but um i use a few macros now i a lot of people don't like me saying mini go which I must still say it because it is a mini go. Now there is something you can switch with the mini go is you could add in the blood fury racial into your mini go. So you're using cast shadow dance symbols and your racial on your mini go. So that's the first go. Every time your goal as a sub rogue is to do mini goes until you get trinket and then you blade. So you want to get the trinket with using your mini go and then you want to carry in, use all of your cooldowns at the same time to actually kill. And your mini go usually comes with your trinket. You don't want to blades and trinket on the same go. So I don't want to click every my blades, my all my cooldowns, and then use my trinket on top of you. You want to use your trinket to get a cooldown. So your mini go would be these three right here, and your big go, which is your burst go, would be a, all of these. Now I have the badge of ferocity. Obviously, I'm not using it, but if you wanted to do a huge burst go, you could use it. I think it got nerfed to where it doesn't do it anymore. Yeah, it doesn't. So it's not that good anymore. Like it's not, I think Cosmic is just way better. But um, this just revolves around symbols, shadow blades. It's just adding shadow blades basically. You don't, you can ignore the uh, unchained um, trinket. But that's my macros, just my burst and that's it. My kidney macro basically stops me from uh, um, auto attacking because if you're wanting a kidney sap, like I said uh, earlier, then you want to instantly stop auto attacking. So for say, where is my kidney macro? It should be right here. So all this is a stop attack. So what, what this will do is I will kidney and I click it again and it'll stop attacking. So as you can see, it stops attacking him. And that's how you kidney sap right there. Now we're going to be getting on to the actual rotation. And now this revolves around like I said, your mini go, your cheap shot go, it just depends on what you're running. Now, if you're running deeper strat, you want to be going off kidneys every go but the first go. Because obviously, you can't mark for death kidney. So, what we're going to do first is, let's say you're facing a rogue mage. Now, anytime you're facing a rogue mage, you usually want to go rogue and you want to go, you want to kidney rogue every time. Like, your first opener either needs to be, it wants to be a kidney. Like, you want to get the opener, you want to be able to mark for death, you want to be able to kidney them. Now, when you kidney them, what you're going to do is you're going to echo first, use your mini go, and basically you'll, it'll look something like this. So we're going to get our combo points here. Now this is the kidney go, mark for death kidney go here. You're going to kidney, mini go, echoing, eviscerate instantly, shadow strike, eviscerate, cheap, and you're going to cheap again, and then eviscerate. As you can see, you didn't space any stuns, and you basically got it down. If you could slow that down a little bit, that'd be perfect. So, we're going to do that one more time. We're going to wait 20 seconds here. Okay, so here's the mini go again. So, this is um, using Mark for Death. So, if you're facing a rogue and rogue mage, because whoever gets Kenny off first on rogue mage usually will win the game. So, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to... Kidney shot, mini go, echoing, uh, eviscerate, shadow strike, eviscerate, cheap shot, cheap shot, eviscerate. 
As you can see, we didn't space any stuns, but we're still doing damage. Now, you could hit Shadow Strike and then Eviscerate, and then do the same rotation, but I like to just instantly go off that Echoing. So, you want to Echo after, actually. I was I, I forgot my own thing. Now, you can do it before, but after, as you can see, your, your, um, your Conduit increases crit, so if you Symbols first and then you Echoing, it'll hit for a higher amount of damage, which it hit for 16k, but it's on a dummy, so it doesn't really matter that much. It usually do about 4 to 8k, which is pretty weak for a uh, Covenant ability, but... Now we're going to be going with the cheap shot go. This will be different. Now this is where we're going to be using Eviscerate. Or Mark for Death. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to do the same thing. Cheap shot. Mark for Death. Eviscerate. Cheap shot. Eviscerate. Cheap shot. Eviscerate. Now this will be slowed down so you guys can just look at what I'm doing. It's kind of hard to explain it in the dynamic that you guys will understand. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of just trying to show you it. So you can slow it down and just do it on target dummies so you can learn it. If I say it, obviously, you're just not going to learn anything. You'll, you'll take in the information, but you need to actually see it with your own eyes and then practice it. We're going to try that one more time once uh, the carrying button comes back. Okay, so it is back up. Like I said, for the mini-go, what we're going to be doing is the same dynamic, except we're using Mark for Death Eviscerate. So we're going to Cheap Shot, mini-go, Echoing, Shadow Strike, Shadow Strike, Shadow Strike, and... Or eviscerate a minute. My bad. But um just like that, it's just the same rotation as if you were on a real person right there. Now obviously I'm not going to I, I can't really explain what I'm doing, even though I could. all we're doing is mini go, echoing, eviscerate, mark for death, eviscerate, cheap shot, eviscerate, cheap shot, eviscerate. Or you cheap shot, cheap shot, so you don't space the sun. Just depends on if it's an orc or not. Because if it's an orc, then you need a cheap shot, cheap shot. So remember, if it is an orc, I say again, you need instead of going for the cheap shot, eviscerate, cheap shot, you need a cheap shot, cheap shot, eviscerate. So if it's an orc, it needs to look something like this. Then you go, eviscerate, cheap shot, cheap shot, eviscerate. That means and then you won't make any mistake of accidentally being too slow of getting the restun now we're going to be going with the blades go so you got their trinket make sure you can you go a non-trinket i repeat unless you're playing with a mage can you go even with a mage i would still can you shot so whether that's getting you combo points or whatever you want to go like this you want to get your combo points wait for the echoing and you're doing the same exact thing that you did on your mini go except you have blades this time which means you're going to be doing a lot more damage a lot more quick way faster so we're going to Kidney shot, blades, echoing, eviscerate, mark for death, eviscerate, echoing, eviscerate, eviscerate, shadow strike, cheap shot at one second, eviscerate, and then cheap shot again, and then eviscerate, and then I eviscerate again, so we got more damn. Part two will be out sometime this week. I'm going to get in a war game, and we're going to do it situational, basically, so, um, that is basically all. That's all there is to it, boys. So, if you guys did enjoy the video obviously make sure to like subscribe we're almost at a thousand subs 